Dolphins Today is presented by Aura, a all-in-one digital safety tool. If you go to Aura.com slash chat sports, that's where you can begin your 14-day free trial. I am Will Scott. Welcome into Dolphins Today. We are still reacting to that loss last night against the Las Vegas Raiders, 15 to 13. And much like last week, an upright decided the game. This time it's not going in the Dolphins' favors. Jason Sanders hit the left upright on a potential game-winning field goal. With a minute and a half left, the Dolphins lost 15 to 13 to fall to 1 and 1 in the 2022 preseason. So on today's show, we're going to be talking about some winners and losers from last night's game. Who separated themselves, who had a good game, and who didn't have a good game. We'll begin with the winners. And before I get into my winners, I want to know yours. Who is your biggest winner from last night's game against the Las Vegas Raiders? Go down, chime in. A couple different rookies we're going to talk about that really had a pretty big impact last night. One of those guys, Eric Ezukanma. Easy E is here. Easy E has arrived. And last week against the Bucks. Just two receptions. I was a little bit disappointed. I wanted to see more from him, and I said last week that he was going to get more involved. He did. Over 100 receiving yards, 114 to be exact, six receptions. He was all over the field. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, Skylar Thompson was finding him every single time. Those two tried to lead a comeback for the Dolphins. Unfortunately, though, the Dolphins fell 15 to 13. But speaking of Sky, he's also a winner. And I said that I wanted to see him sustain the success that he had last week. He obviously had that remarkable debut against Tampa Bay, going for over 200 yards. I'm like, you know what? I, I know that's not a fluke, but I still want to see him be successful, kind of have that level of success. Well, here's what he did against the Raiders. 9 of 10, 129 yards, a touchdown, no interception. So once again, Skylar Thompson looked absolutely fantastic. Just one incompletion. He played the entire fourth quarter. And Sky's the real deal, man. I'm really, really excited about Skyler. Two really solid starts. Um, I should say two really solid games to start his NFL career. Here are his preseason stats. First two games, 29 of 38, 347 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He's been very consistent. He's been very accurate. He's been poised. He's been confident. All you can ask for out of Skylar Thompson in these first two games. Teddy Bridgewater might be in trouble. Those are some words that I was not expecting to be uttering when Skylar Thompson was drafted. But here we are, and Teddy Bridgewater is gripping because Skylar Thompson has looked good. Teddy, not so much. We'll talk about Teddy later on in today's show. But pick a QB, too. Who should be the backup behind Tua Tunga Vailoa? Should it be Teddy Bridgewater or it should it be Skylar Thompson? Type TB for Bridgewater or type ST for Skylar down in the comment section. It is the pinned comment on today's video. So when ad break comes, go down, chime in, TB or ST. Let's talk about another rookie. That's Braylon Sanders. And Braylon really needed to have a good game last night, and he did. He did not have any receptions in the first preseason game. And I remember pretty early on in camp, there was legit talk that this guy had a chance even as a UDFA, to maybe be the fourth or fifth wide receiver on this team. But the second week of camp, he really didn't have that much of an impact, did not have any impact against the Bucks last week, no receptions on two targets. But he had a pretty impressive game last night. Three receptions, 40 yards, had a, pretty, uh, had a couple really impressive grabs. So I was pretty pleased with what I saw from Braylon Sanders. Three receptions, 40 yards last night against the Las Vegas Raiders. I also was really impressed with Porter Gustin, man. I mean, Porter Gustin uh, was all over the field last night. The defensive end out of, uh, well, spent last season with the Cleveland Browns practice squad. Dolphins pick him up in May, and he's looked very, very good through the first two preseason games. Porter Gustin, also a winner for me. He had a couple tackles last night, had that big sack in the first half, and I compared, you know, I, I look at what he did Last night, and I look at what he did in week one in the preseason, and I really do believe that Porter Gustin is going to make this football team. You look at the defensive line right now. He kind of played linebacker, too, in Cleveland, but now he's more of a defensive end, kind of an edge rusher in Miami. I think Porter Gustin's going to make this football team. He's looked very good in camp, very good in the two preseason games as well. Your bank account's going to be looking really good if you, make this, if you, uh, if you go to Aura, because Aura is going to be providing financial fraud protection 
they're going to get you real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries. So if there's an obnoxious Raiders fan that's trying to steal your credit card information uh, or is going to alert you of that when you get a suspicious charge in your credit card. So go down to that link, or.com slash chat sports. That's where you can begin your 14-day free trial. Let's talk about Cater Kohu. As you notice, four of these five winners are all rookies. A couple of them UDFAs. Cater Kohu, one of those UDFAs. UDFA out of Texas A&M Commerce was really excited when they picked him up, and he's looked pretty good in camp. Did not play last week against the Bucks. Played last night against the Raiders, though, and looked good. Three tackles, one pass breakup, and Kenzie Alexander got beat one or two times. Of course, Noah Benogany got beat a few times. Cater Code did not get beat last night. One-on-one matchups, he looked very good. If he was Patrick Seatman's height, that pass breakup would have been a interception. He, he, tried, he tried really hard to go up there and snatch it, uh, but nonetheless, a pretty impressive showing from Cater Kohu, and he's on the roster bubble, right? He's got to beat out Mac Alexander, maybe even beat out Noah Igbenogany as well, but I really like Cater. In fact, I would have him ahead, if I'm the GM at least, I'd have him ahead of Noah Igbenogany in terms of making this team. He's been the better player this offseason. Let's talk about some losers now. Number one loser is obviously Jason Sanders, and I understand that he has made six of seven field goals this preseason, but when it mattered the most, game is on the line. He missed a potential game-winning 46-yard field goal. Would have been a go-ahead field goal with a minute and a half left. It hit the left upright. He made a 57-yarder earlier in the game. However, he missed a go-ahead field goal from 46 yards, hitting the left upright. It's a shame. You know, Jason. Uh, Jason's obviously looked pretty good this preseason, but last night when the game was on the line, he couldn't come through. Teddy Bridgewater didn't look great. I'm going to be honest. Teddy Bridgewater struggled. He just completed half of his passes. There was nothing special that I saw out of Teddy Bridgewater last night. Here's the stat line. 10 of 20, 119 yards, no interceptions, no touchdowns. I mean, in Teddy's defense, the offensive line was terrible. We're going to talk about the O-line in a second, but he was under duress all game. But there was just nothing special that I've seen from Teddy in the preseason. There's just nothing in camp, in the preseason games. Obviously, he didn't play last week, but... Today, is in terms of last night, he just did not look impressive. He has not been impressive this offseason. He's been the third-best quarterback out of the three. Skylar Thompson has looked better than Teddy Bridgewater, and the Dolphins are going to have a decision to make, maybe in the middle of the regular season, who's going to be QB2. Right now, Skylar Thompson looks like the better quarterback. Michael Dieter looked terrible last night. Terrible. Michael Dieter was very, very disappointing. Looked pretty good in the first preseason game. Had 10 good snaps out of the 11 snaps in the first preseason game. But last night, he had two brutal snaps in the fourth quarter. One of those snaps hit the ground, didn't reach Skylar Thompson, was an eight-yard loss. Three plays later, there was a bad center quarterback exchange. That was on Dieter. So in the fourth quarter, he had two really brutal snaps. Pleasantly surprised that Connor Williams did not have uh, awful snaps. Now, Seven snaps from Connor Williams. Two of those were high, so five of seven for Connor. But Dieter was the worst center last night, which was a little bit surprising. He was awful. He was terrible. Uh, very disappointing performance for Michael Dieter, which means Lasina. Which means Lasina to Miami makes a lot of sense because if the team believes in Connor Williams to be the starting center, but don't believe in Dieter, then sign Jake Lasina to be the backup center to Connor Williams because Michael Dieter did not look good in that football game last night. Now spam. Hashtag Lucina to Miami down in the comments section. Let's make it happen. Go type hashtag Lucina to Miami. He was brought in for a workout about two weeks ago. We have not heard anything since. I want to see Jake Lucina in Miami. Let's get the best center in the USFL to the Miami Dolphins. They need to sign a capable center. It's a must. The rushing offense is a loser again. Much like last week, they did not look good last night. Nothing, there's really no impressive performances among the running backs. They just had 38 rushing yards on 18 carries. So, not good. Uh, there was really no significant run last night from the Dolphins. I remember Salvan Ahmed had one first down run, and that was about it. Here are the stats. So, Ahmed had five carries, 20 yards. Gaskin, four carries, 12 yards. Edmonds, three carries, three yards. Quandre White, one for four. He obviously had the receiving touchdown, but from a rushing perspective, one carry for four yards. And then Sonny Michel, two carries, no yards. So let's take a look at the stats in the first two games. 32 carries, 87 yards, 2.71 yards per carry. 
That's not good. Luckily, it's just the preseason. They will get better. We did not see Raheem Mostert. Obviously, a limited sample size with the other two top running backs in Edmonds and Michelle. But are you concerned about the rushing offense? Type Y for yes or type in for no down in the comment section. Last week, I said, don't overreact. It's the preseason. This week, I would say the same thing. Mike McDaniel is a genius when it comes to running the football. He is going to get this figured out by the regular season. I don't know if they're going to get the offensive line figured out, though. I really don't. The offensive line was horrendous last night. I didn't think they could get any worse from the first game, but they got a lot worse. Tua was under heavy pressure the entire time he was in. Same goes for Teddy Bridgewater. They got a little bit better in the fourth quarter with Skylar Thompson. But the offensive line is a problem. We have known this the entire offseason. The team has not done enough to address that issue. And I am very, very concerned. Seeing Tua run for his life in the two drives that he was in had me very, very scared for Tua. Now keep in mind, Teron Armstead did not play last night. So that's something to keep in mind. Armstead's going to be back, and he's obviously going to be the heart and soul of that offensive line. But Coleman looked terrible. Austin Jackson did not look good in his limited action. So I'm very, very concerned about the offensive line. They're going to have some decisions to make when it comes to you know some of the roster cuts, but I would not be surprised to see Coleman as part of Tuesday's cuts. Now, who is your biggest loser? Go down in the comment section. Who's your biggest loser from last night's game? Doesn't have to be someone I talked about. I want to hear from y'all. Biggest loser. Go down. Chime in. Thanks for watching this edition of Dolphins Day. And talk to you tomorrow with Overreaction Monday.